Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, we're going to take a look at Bass Boost. Uh, it's not getting an abundance of extra largemouth or smallmouth fish. This is a function that is on a lot of amplifiers, uh, subwoofer and mid-range amplifiers. But when should you use it? When shouldn't you use it? And what are the actual effects? Well, I've got this test set up right here. So we're gonna go over exactly what it does so you can better use it or not use it. Most likely you're gonna not use it and why you shouldn't use it. So here's our test setup. We have a Sundown Audio SAX 50.4. I've had this amp for a very long time. It has not made any more. Uh, we do have the full line of Sundown Audio amplifiers on emfcaraudio.com. So you can check those out. This one in the SAX line has got a ton of adjustments. We've got gain, subsonic filter, high pass filter, low pass filter, bass boost, adjustable cue on the bass boost, uh, times one and times 10 range. So we could run this in an active uh, component setup. And in one of these cases, you might use the bass boost a little bit. Our bass boost frequency is adjustable from 35 to 120 hertz. Now we'll see the actual effects of when you set this, uh, but we do have an adjustable range on a lot of amps, it's just set. It might just be 45 hertz or 40 hertz and it may not even tell you where it does it, but we do have a frequency adjustment and how much boost. Um, it's zero to 18 dB and that's a lot. Uh, I've never understood why it would go that high it really doesn't make any sense, but we do have it, and I will use this for demonstration purposes. We also have an oscilloscope. This is going to show us what the waveform looks like. I don't have speakers connected to this at all. It's only going into the oscope, so you don't have to worry about being able to hear the distortion or anything like that. Uh, we can actually see what the wave looks like. Now, I've got a CD player connected here, uh, it's going to play over 30 seconds, a sweep of 20 hertz to 200 hertz. So again, you won't hear it, but you'll see it on this display right here. So watch this. Over 30 seconds, 20 to 200. Right now, we've got the frequency set all the way down to 35, down to 0 dB. So this is effectively not doing anything because it's at 0 dB. And we're going to do a sweep watching this screen and making sure that everything is good, fine, clean signal. And uh, we will start that. Now you'll notice we've got right around 36.6, uh, 37 volts in that neighborhood. And it's staying clean. Now this is readjusting uh, for the frequency as it goes up. That's why you're seeing it get bigger and smaller. But watching voltage, we're holding the same voltage and got a clean signal the entire time. Now I'm gonna go up on the volume one click, keeping everything on the amp the same. And we'll see that we do have a pretty hard clip and 41 volts. So this is outside of the voltage range where this is gonna be clean. 35, 36, we're fine. 41, we're not, and we're holding 41 volts, but it is clipped. We know our volume level that's going to clip. We know the voltage that it's going to clip. So let's introduce bass boost and we're gonna leave it at 35 Hertz, but we're gonna go up to 9 dB just to make sure we have a nice drastic difference. Now remember this is half of the boost that we have available. So we're going to start this again. And you see, this is a very, very heavy clip. It was at 46 volts, 45, now 44, 43, 42, 41. So as we get later in the track, our voltage drops. We've dropped all the way down to 41 volts, 39 volts, just barely. 
So we have it at 35 hertz and we have it boosted at 9 dB. Now what's happening is while it is 35 hertz that it's picking it, it's not just 35 hertz. We have the frequencies uh, above and below it and it's going to have a curve like this. And this curve is not uh, adjustable. There are processors and various other things that are adjustable and you can adjust that Q uh, it's from anywhere, usually from 0.1 or 0.2 all the way up to 1.0. And that's basically how steep that curve is. Um, this is not, it's very broad. I think it's probably gonna be six dB per octave uh, is the adjustment on that. Uh, so what's happening is here's our 35 and it's doing this. You saw that that was clipping right there. Now what we're gonna do is go to 18 dB. So we're gonna turn this all the way up. Now remember, when we were up in the 41 volts area, it was clipping. And that voltage tapered off because we were getting above where that boost frequency is. So we're gonna go 18 dB boost. Keep an eye on the display over here. 51 volts. 41, 48, 46, 45, and it's extremely clipped. Down to 44, we're only halfway through, down to 43, 42, 41, and you see the clipping isn't as bad as we get towards the upper frequencies. So you saw a huge shift in that from way, way, way clipped at a much higher voltage all the way down because I turned up to 18 dB. So now we're like this in the amplitude. So now, since we have that at 18 dB, you saw a huge shift to that. And now we have a very, very steep peak. Whereas before we had a little one at nine, now it's going even higher in the same spot. All it did was cause more clipping. So if you have your gain set and it's correct and you're not clipping, and then you introduce bass boost, all you're doing is introducing clipping at that point. You're not actually making more power, you're boosting that area, and the higher you turn that up, the more it's clipping it, and in that spot. The further you get away from that frequency, the less it's going to clip, as you saw on the O-scope. So we're gonna turn this back to 9 dB, but we're gonna take our frequency and go all the way to 120. And this is going to demonstrate the shift in that frequency. So we're gonna start this again. Remember, we're starting at 20 hertz. And we are clipped at 47 volts. And that's going up just slightly. And it seems to be holding and we are clipping pretty badly. So we didn't see a huge shift in that, but there is a shift. Now we'll go to 18 dB, start the track over. We're starting at 49 volts, 50, 51, 52, and you see it's insanely clipped at that point because 120 is where we're uh, starting on the frequency and it is pretty broad. So you saw massive, massive clipping and uh, for, this is our 120 starting point. Um, we have that same loop there. When we start at 35, if that bump is over here, these lower frequencies are getting cut off. So now the question is, when should you use bass boost? Because according to this, you should never use it, which is kind of a general guideline is you just shouldn't use it. But there are cases where it may be useful. If you have a mid-range setup and you're using it on a four channel, as this one is, on the bottom end of response, you might have a little bit cut off where you need just a little bit more. And I say a little bit, you might use a few dB in that 18 dB boost. You should definitely not use all of that. Uh, so you might have a use for a small amount of it and that would be fine. And using an RTA, you could see where you might be down like one or two dB in a certain spot and you can adjust that out on the amp. 
where you can just give it a little bump and then nudge it to flatten it out. And that's kind of the idea of what that is for. But as you saw, you can make it clip really fast if you give it just a little bit too much. Now, this is a completely static load. There's, there's nothing on it. So you have no impedance fluctuation. I intentionally left a speaker off of it so we didn't have the impedance fluctuation so you could see exactly what was happening. Now, if you do have an impedance fluctuation, which you will at different frequencies, you may run into a case where you have a very high impedance rise, so you make very little power in a certain spot. In that case, you could boost back that frequency, again, probably just a little bit, and fill in that gap. Now that's very helpful when you have an adjustable setting like on this amp, not so much if it's only an on or off. And a lot of those on off cases, it's not even adjustable for how much, it's just on or off. So it may be three or six dB or who knows that it just goes nuts at whatever frequency. Odds are that's not gonna work out for you. It's just going to generate clipping as you saw in the O-scope. So there are very, very few cases where using bass boost is going to be helpful. Uh, generally speaking, you should leave it off. The only way that I would say you should use it or could use it is if you have proper test equipment to see where you have a frequency deficiency to where you would want to boost it back. The other spot that I have seen it useful is in some vehicles, the factory radio might cut the base uh, after a certain frequency. So it basically high passes that. So if you add a line output converter that does not compensate for that, you would actually be cutting the amount of low frequency signal going into your subamp. In that case, you would have to boost it back, uh, but you could end up with a response curve that does something like this. Uh, because you're boosting right here. Uh, so it would come up, go back down, and you might still have some kind of saddle to where it doesn't sound quite right. And I've seen that with installations before. I've done them uh, where that was the case. But you may be able to boost it back to where it's audibly better. And it's not that you're clipping it, it's just that you're providing it with sufficient signal uh, coming out to level it off because coming in, it goes down. So you boost it back to level it off. And it may not be perfectly flat, but it's better than nothing if that's what you're dealing with. So to summarize, just leave the bass boost off. You probably are doing more harm than good with that, and uh, now you've physically seen the proof. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you know somebody who uses bass boost too much, definitely link them to this video. Make sure you share this on uh, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere you can. The more people see these, the more these will continue to do them. You can support the channel by shopping at emfcaraudio.com for all of your EMF audio, sundown audio, audio control, SBC, and excess power needs. We even have the new sundown audio SAM 65.4 and SAM 500, 500 watt monoblock, and this is a 65 by four amp. This doesn't have a ton of adjustments like this other one, very basic, but it will fit on motorcycle ATE under seats, very small places. So definitely give these a look. They are very inexpensive as well. Good stuff here. Make sure you go check them out on emfcaraudio.com. Make sure you follow us on Facebook for sale updates like Black Friday, uh, Instagram as well. And you can also support us on Patreon. I'll see you again in another Tech Stuff Tuesday.